Welcome back, my little recusants, to another episode of Final Fantasy XIII. We are just about finished the Titans Trials. It's so exciting. So, realistically, all we have left is D4, E6, and E4, as we can see there. And then we unlock a brand new Final Seath mission. And that last one is going to be tricky. But let's go along and finish up E4 first. And the whole issue with that first mission that we only get one star in, we just need to have a Deceptus all and get a preemptive strike, you know? What's super interesting is those little penguins are essentially one of the Titan's Trials and from selling a bunch of bomb cores and things we can get another Deceptisol which we can use for the first mission when we finish up this one. And like that, having the Survivalist catalogue, all the different drop rates and just getting another first strike accessory maximizing it so we have a full ATB starting off and if we hop on over with our paradigms this is all about just doing damage AOE as quickly as possible and get through this don't let them summon because if they summon it takes more time so if they do end up summoning your best bet is to just restart the fight and try again. Or just check if you got five stars and reload the save if you didn't. Because there is no point in going through like the six tiers of the battle again. But as you can see, Fang's absolute just blitzing gets so much done. And that was all because we had Aurora Scarves on our two commandos. If they had to like charge up and wait for that to be finished, we wouldn't have gotten the five stars. So realistically, if I probably had just gone with lightning and done blitzes as well, it would have been done even quicker. But you live and you learn and we got the five stars. But we also got the Deceptisol as you saw. So we're now gonna hop on back and go through our first mission again. And now that we have Deceptisols, we can get five stars. So again, guys, realistically, go fight the big tortoises, the adamant tortoise. Then you need to get your platinum magnets. And then once you have enough platinum magnets, like five or six, sell them all and buy a copious amount of deceptisols just so you're able to, for fights like this, Put on a Deceptisol, instantly win, and get five stars. And unfortunately, I didn't put a thingy on Hope. So, if I had had an Aurora Scarf, we all would have been attacking straight away. But, thankfully, we're going to be getting five stars. Just from the bonus of XP multiplier we get for starting with the preemptive strike. And even if you were struggling again with that, there's the hope that when we eventually finish all of the seat stones, we will unlock the gold watch as a reward. We can maximize that accessory to its fullest. And then we get a huge boost to our target time expectations, which makes it even easier again to five star. Just if for whatever reason, you're only getting four star and you can't figure out why, just wait till you get the gold watch and retry some of these more stubborn fights. But with Deceptisol and with the gold watch and good stats, you should get it. Now, as I say, I literally did this fight and then I realized, oh my god, I, I didn't five I didn't uh, five star, so I cut that out. But basically, what you need to make sure you do is you need to ensure that you attack the 
like rust one the big rust one you need to attack 100 percent and just make sure that hope has an aurora scarf you know i just was like you need he needs to start the fight doing a big aoe attack or something so at least with all those different buffs we have haste we have everything we should literally get through this really quickly and this is where we need to be focusing on not attacking that one which you know was a mistake we need to be focusing on the corrosive custard nearly lose that like nearly lose the bloody stagger again which is a disaster because those other ones are just weaker we will be able to have fang take out one of them like she's already took out the tomato and so long as we're attacking this one there's no chance that uh we won't take them down so like maybe a runga would have also been been good for that but again with a preemptive strike and just making sure we get everything kind of staggered quickly there was a uh, no worries about that fight to be honest So teleporting over to mission 50. We have another behemoth. So you know the drill. More than likely we're going to have to debuff it loads. More than likely we're going to have to try and just finish it really quickly. Not let it regain all its HP if we can. And once again just tidying up our accessories there. To make sure we have Aurora Strike on our two commandos so they can just run in and just start doing damage immediately. And that's basically every Titan's Trial bar this new one that's going to unlock once we've done all other ones. Which is going to be quite cool. Which basically means you have to do all of the six of them like, there's no way to have not done all of them if you haven't faced down all six of the e bosses but um yeah with hope now having an aurora scarf and lightning having the hay shoes we can all just sort of attack super quick and once again we're gonna now try and just keep get the stagger up a lot more hope's being launched that's actually kind of good purely because it interrupted him and now we're able just to pepper him with more spells and unfortunately he does get the the healing done but as you can see he's actually like so high up in the stagger that now if we just put some debuffs on him come on land deprotect come on land deprotect it can be deprotected land deprotect there we go oh we even get poison off as well so now with all of these and his stagger really high just stick with the two commandos and look at his health just gone in an instant there we go it was pretty easy and we don't get five stars but if we actually just did triple rav and then went into triple commando when we had like a bunch of debuffs on so if you get his like stagger to roughly three four hundred with triple rav and then a bunch of deep attacks and stuff like there's definitely ways you could have done that quicker obviously putting on a bunch of the buffs so you have like protect shell faith bravery all that jazz as well to do more damage it all depends but right now we have unlocked a new one which is this question mark question mark question mark question mark and basically, that quest has now unlocked in either D1, D2, D3, D4. There's now a third seat stone that will bring you to this question mark, question mark, question mark um, mission. And it'll be the only seat stone that's still glowing. As you can see, it's right behind us here. And this is actually one of the other undying seat known as... Atticus and he's basically the guy that we fought in Orphan's Cradle except he's like super super souped up 
Like, the guys in Orphan's Cradle seem easy in comparison to this guy. He just has so much HP that we really have to manage it. And this method will definitely let you win. But I was too conservative in the very opening hours. And the whole thing is I basically put on a bunch of nimble toed boots to improve Lightning's evasion. And I'm going to set her as the Sentinel. And I don't believe it's a bad idea. It's just you don't need to have this strategy for the entire fight. Only when we get to kind of three phases with him. Okay. Purely because in the beginning he just doesn't do that much damage. But by the end of the fight you absolutely need like as much improved evasion as possible. So that Lightning can just avoid as much of the attacks as possible with her elude Sentinel ability. And she kind of has... You know, decent enough HP that it's going to it's going to work fairly well. And obviously, if we're redoing all of these fights, we can definitely do it when we're at max Crystarium. And with that benefit, Hope won't have to be using the growth egg, and he can just have an extra 250 in magic for extra DPS. So as you can see here, I basically have like Delta attack, but it's all lightning with all Sentinel and I didn't need to be that conservative. I could have had her in like a Relentless Assault or with like some Saboteuring. So Titan's like, here's another behemoth, guys. So first we had a Tonbury kill one of the cool undying seed in a cutscene, and then we ended up fighting him. Yeah, Hope, you tell him. <laughs> and once again, I'm pretty sure if you had different leaders, we can't just rush into this if we had different leaders, I'm sure they would say something different and fight facing off against Atticus. And we basically, as you can see, Lightning is avoiding stuff. And with Protectra and Braver and Faithra, like we can do tons of damage. So we didn't need Lightning to be that conservative because he's only doing 500 damage as you can see. So we definitely could have just had her building up this change gauge as well and different things like that. Or at least having her as a saboteur and Hope doing Ravenger or something. Because Hope as a saboteur is legitimately horrifically bad. But, you know, we live and we learn. But the bottom line is you're going to want to put him with as much debuffs as possible. And just keep on peppering with debuffs until we get D-Protect, D-Shell and Slow. We can then focus on healing up Lightning. And now Mystic Tower to build up the Chain Gauge. And what's super interesting is when you use fire with, um, with, uh, and fire on, it seems to just make your fire spells way more effective. But then you slowly, slowly build, and as you can see, he's never going to really stagger, unfortunately. But once you keep up your buffs, And Lightning can keep dodging, so we don't need to like heal as much. But again, even when we were buffing, we could have been having Lightning as Ravenger to just keep building up that Chain Gauge. Because we want the Chain Gauge roughly around maybe 600, and then just leave it off to just attack with Commandos and heal when needed. And keep the debuffs on, like we need D-Protect, we need D-Shell. 
And unfortunately, Hope is just not the man for this debuffing, this debuffing job. Like, he could have literally just been a Ravenger and just worked so much better. Just building it a lot better, and it's, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, you know, hindsight 2020, looking back at it now. But with Lightning as a Sentinel and those Nimble Toad boots active, like, you will rarely need to heal her, and it's a fairly safe bet that uh, you're gonna survive. And sometimes all you want and need is just getting these battles done just to get their completion rewards and then circle back when you've had uh, better equipment, better I you know, better stats, better accessories, better leveled up accessories, things like that. So when we beat this guy, we end up with the Genji gloves, which basically allow Fang, well and Lightning, or whoever it's equipped to, I should say, break the 9999 damage limit which obviously is fantastic when we're trying to beat those adamant voices you know really quickly and once again I don't know why we're kind of hopping back over here just to be like oh yeah like how much do we do we do it's like once you're just having one commando you could still have relentless assault everybody just doing more damage And once again, we just have to keep trying to get that slow on him because he does just attack too rapidly. But for this initial first phase, he barely does anything. So the higher we can get his stagger bar in this phase, the less threatening he is. But again, this could have just been try disasters, could have just been, you know, relentless assaults. As you can see, he's still doing like a thousand damage though. So the fact that he's just getting misses is great. And the fact that he's slowed as well is another great thing. Like we need slow to stay on him. But as you can see, two medics and a sentinel is more than enough to kind of keep himself topped up really well. And even if he's doing a thousand damage, if you just make sure protector is on, we've nothing to worry about. But yeah, even if I was looking at this, you could have had Sentinel, even Sentinel Hope and the two girl, the other girls on Saboteur would have just done way better. Just because Lightning has multicast single level spells instead of slow, just Hope just throwing AoE debuffs on a single enemy. Not the same. <laughs> But as you can see, even just on 200, we're doing so much damage as our commando, like 37k. Plenty. Plenty, plenty. Back to Delta attack can have a mixture of damage and stagger building, but yeah. Just trying our best to just keep our buffs active. And getting in our bravery and faith because it seems that like, you know, we're we're obviously being told, oh he does lots of really strong attacks, so you know, Fang isn't getting to the stage where she can actually put up her faith res and brave res. But this marks the end of phase one. Where he now gets a brand new sword and now has brand new abilities to go with it. So this is where he starts to kind of concentrate and, you know, remove buffs and to potentially apply the protect, which will then cause him to do lots of damage. Now Lightning has no buffs. But she's after hitting a lewd and now dodge the attack thanks to her nimble toes, so. There's literally no risk to her whatsoever. And so long as she stays aggroed, we can keep it up. But the problem is we just keep on throwing buffs on lightning, which like she just keeps losing way too quickly. But then just try and throw up an L 
bravery and faith to keep everything alive. But as you can see, we should definitely have been doing more try disasters just to try and build it up all the more quicker to get into the four or five hundreds and just leave it there. We didn't need to make it any higher. And see what you have to remember as well is that, you know, if we just had lightning as, you know, the um, saboteur, because like Hope also has a lead. So I could have just put him as the sentinel while the girls were doing all the debuffs and, you know, building the chain gauge and stuff and just swapped him to, to that. But the risk of that is if, you know, if lightning is aggroed and she accidentally gets killed, it's not game over. You know, but also there's the benefit of if I hadn't been controlling Fang, then we would have, you know, been able to get the Bravers and Faithers out. But the risk of that is we get none of the end fires and Hope would barely ever cast end fire on, on us if I wasn't controlling him. So, you know, it's all swings and roundabouts as to who's the best to control for what. But 100%. Hope did not need to be the saboteur in this situation. It could have just been, you know, lightning and fang as sabs and then Hope throwing out spells to build up that stagger a bit more. And then as well as that, we could have definitely done with like a triple commando one where it's just like, yeah, we've gotten the the and triple rav and triple commando just to be like you know when we're not done healing we're just gonna go all out offensive with our in fire spells and our powerful physical offense and our high commando rolls and like even if he does hit her without any of the buffs she has she still ends up only taking three thousand which at like fifteen eighteen thousand she can heal that up really quickly but again, look at how much damage Fang is doing. Like, it's it's pretty good, but this guy just has an astronomical amount of HP. So you can imagine now if Lightning was also, like, if it was, like, Commando, 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 or, like, Commando, Ravenger, Commando, just how much damage we would have been doing a lot more. Like, here we finally go into our two Commandos here with Hope as well. And now we get into his third phase with a crazy looking sword. Looks a little bit like Lightning's ultimate weapon when we eventually see that. But again, the higher we get that ATD earlier, the like, you know, we're doing so much damage even just now. And, you know, this is where the elude comes in because this attack, if it hits multiple times, would just destroy lightning so that's where her actually eluding and her actually getting so you know it's really only at this point that we need to worry and make sure that she is eluding the um enemy attacks you know but at this point his hp is so so low and realistically it's like yeah he only needs to get to about four or five hundred stagger because even at 300 we're doing so so much once he's debuffed and has like slow and curse and all that jazz. So yeah, all we needed was to get like to three, 400 as quickly as possible and then just keep on the offensive and then leave lightning and sentinel once he gets to this whole meditate scenario. Because that will do lots of damage and she like misses and avoids tons of little attacks. Come on, just keep him debuffed. Come on, come on, come on. So you can imagine if we got to like 400 even earlier, how much we could have just stayed on the offensive and just wiped through his HP all the more quicker. Back to commandos. And obviously, if we go back then again with um, the uh, accessory we get from this fight, Fang can actually then break the damage limit, which obviously 
only more incentivizes us to get the stagger lock higher and higher and be able to um, do tons of damage. Yeah, I'm literally like, all right, we're actually, we're actually, we're actually doing, we're doing great. We're doing great. Like, I could have literally switched over to, like, Triple Commando, and the battle would probably already be over now. I'm literally like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to go back to Saboteur. We're doing enough damage. We have the end fires. We have the whatever. Oh, oh, careful, careful, careful. I'm really, I'm really, like, uh, hoping Lightning's uh, whole situation uh, <laughs> keeps her safe. Power healing, let's go. Oh, thank God, yeah. She avoided all of that. So that's where your, your double nimble toe boots are really good. But, yeah, my, if I'm telling you guys again, it's literally get be a lot more aggressive early. Get that stagger bar rocketing up super quick. Like, get that to it. Because, like, we're doing so much damage now that it's like, yeah, we just needed around 400. And that's all. That's all. And, as I say, we could even have swapped out Hope as the whole evasive Sentinel. Since his attacks aren't doing that much. And, you know, that's that. Genji Gloves unlocked. New rank. And like all undying seats, we end up with their little crystal being sent away. Got a nice cutscene from Titan, and I'll talk to you guys after that. And with that, we get the natural selector achievement. Beating all of the Titan's trials, which is quite awesome. And now he is no longer observing us over this outcropping. And we get to see that we've actually beaten every single one, including number 51, Atticus. So well done us. We just have to hop back and make sure we five star them. But I think next episode, Basically, I'm going to show you guys, because I'm going to just take some time off screen to grind out all the ultimate weapons, get all the trapezohedrons. So you've seen that three episodes ago, you literally just fight the big turtles and just keep fighting them until they drop trapezohedrons. You can use your summon ability to make it a lot quicker. And what I would suggest is save when you have three TP, do the summon trick, get through it in about a minute. If you don't get a trapezohedron, Quit to the main menu, reload your save. And then once you do get one, you can upgrade a, an ultimate weapon on Fang or Lightning. Preferably Fang, since you can then boost her strength way, way more. She'll have an extra ATB and she'll be able to break the damage limit, so it'll just make the farming even easier. Then you go refill your TP by fighting a couple of different fights, get it back to max, and then you're laughing. And as I say, as you can see now, the Crystarium is looking nearly finished for like a bunch of the characters' third roles. So again, doing these Titans trials with the growth egg just makes a lot of sense. You're going back to these fights over and over. And you might as well be getting double the EXP. And as you can see, I'm like looking over these different four stars, these different five stars. But as I say, next episode, I'm going to be going back to those older ones, making sure we've picked up any that we've missed. And just making sure we're going in sequence down along so that all of them have five stars and then move on to tensions towers ones and so on and so on so talk to you next episode guys thanks so much for all the support of the series and have a good one talk soon Come true, let darkness slip aside.